at confidence intervals for sample proportions. Now, as we saw in earlier videos, it is possible but unlikely that a point estimate, that is a single value of p hat, will be exactly equal to the true population proportion p. It's therefore useful to give not just a point estimate, but an interval that is likely to contain the true value of p to a certain degree of confidence. So we're going to have a look at this problem. So the question is, a researcher surveyed a random sample of 640 voters in a large city and found that 416 supported a particular proposal. So what we're going to look at is give an approximate 90% confidence interval and an approximate 95% confidence interval for the proportion of all voters in the city who support the proposal, and we want the answers correct to three decimal places. And more importantly, explain the meaning of your answer. So what does a confidence interval actually mean? OK, now, if you look in the formula sheet that you get with the exam, you will see that uh, an interval likely to contain the true population proportion is of the form p hat plus or minus this margin of error. So this plus or minus margin of error, it's got two components. It's got a z component. We'll have a look to see what that's about. And the square root of p hat, 1 minus p hat over n, which is a bit like the standard deviation, except that it's got p hat instead of p. So what's that on about? So let's have a look at that. OK, estimating the standard deviation of p hat. Now, the standard deviation of p hat provides an indication of the precision of the point estimate for a particular value of p. That's because if we have a small standard deviation, it is more likely that p hat is going to be near the center and therefore more likely that it's going to be close to p. However, in practice, the value of p, the true population proportion, is generally not known. If the researcher already knew the proportion of people who were in favor of the proposal, he wouldn't have to conduct the survey. So p is generally unknown in practice. So what we need to do is estimate the standard deviation by replacing p with the best estimate we have of p, which is p hat. So that's why, instead of having standard deviation, we've got the estimate of the standard deviation. That's why we've got the p hats under the square root sign rather than the p's. Now the next part, the z bit, relies or is to do with the level of confidence and the value of z. So the value of z is the quantile of the standard normal distribution. Now, in a previous video, you would have seen that the normal distribution is, under many circumstances, is a very good model for the distribution of sample proportions. Now, I said that z is the quantile from the standard normal, but then any normal distribution can be viewed as just being a transformation of the standard normal. So these z values refer to the values that you would need to have a cumulative distribution, in other words, a shaded area under the curve. So for example, in this example here, uh, for an 85% confidence level, in other words, the, the shaded area being 0.85, I would need to have z values of 1.44. Now, for 90%, I'll just use this slider, adjust that to 90%. The area under the curve is 0.9. So for that confidence interval, the z value, corresponding z value is 1.64. And these are probably the two values that you need to know for the exam. For a 90% confidence interval, 1.64. For a 
95% confidence interval, very close to two, but it's not exactly two. To two decimal places, it's 1.96. For a 99% confidence interval, it's 2.58. In other words, 2.58 standard deviations from the mean. All right, so back to the question. So we've got 640 voters and uh, the let's call supporters being, uh, selecting a supporter being a success. So the number of successes or the number of supporters, 416. So P hat is just 416 over 640, which is 0.65. Now for a 90% confidence interval, we would use the value Z equal to 1.64, work out substitute the values into the formula and I would have a confidence interval. For 95% I do exactly the same except for Z I would have 1.96. However, we can do things a bit more efficiently than that with TI Inspire because it actually has a built-in command. So a 95 a 90% confidence interval with n equal 460, x equal 1.64. Let's search our menu, see what might be relevant. So this time it's statistical inference, so perhaps let's try number six, statistics. And we see six again, confidence intervals. Now, there's a whole lot of options. In math methods, the only one to consider is number five, one proportion. One refers to the fact that you have a single sample and you're looking for a proportion with a Z value. Now it asks the number of successes. Now we know the number of successes, it was 416. We'll tab down, N, we had a sample size of 640. Tab down. Now this time we want a 90% confidence interval, so just 0.9. Enter twice, and we get this table here. Now the, it, it gives you the value of p hat, which you could have worked out in your head, 0.65. This is the interesting bit, the lower limit of the interval and the upper limit of the interval. So let's look at that. Okay, they're the two key values that I'm interested in. So the 90% confidence interval is the interval from the lower bound to the upper bound. So we can be quite confident that the true population proportion is going to be somewhere between those two values. For a 95% confidence interval, now we, we know exactly what we're doing. We go menu, statistics 6, confidence intervals 6. Then remember it's only number 5, the single proportion. So X this time 416, tab down N640 again. This time we do want the default of 0.95 and we get slightly different values. They're not that different, but they are slightly different for upper and lower. So they are the values there. So this time the confidence interval is 0.613 to 0.686. We, we're even more confident that the um, true population proportion is going to be between these two values. But in order to be that little bit more confident, you'll notice that we had to extend the, the length of our interval. So there is always a trade-off between the level of confidence and the margin of error. That is how big your interval is. So what does that what, what does a confidence interval actually mean? What is a 90% confidence interval? Well, we'll do a simulation to help us understand that. So this time, let's assume 
that the true population proportion really was 0.65, and we're going to simulate drawing random samples of size 640 from a large population, which has a true population proportion of 0.65. And we're look, going to uh, graphically have a look at 90% confidence intervals. So I've got a little program running in the background that runs this. So this is the true population proportion here. And I'm going to select, I'm going to draw a sample. Okay, so this time, you'll notice the red dot is the point estimate. That is the actual value of p hat. Then the ends of the intervals are shown here and here. So that's plus or minus that margin of error. And we see that even though the point estimate is not exactly the same as the true population proportion, we see that the true population proportion is contained within that interval. Okay, so let's draw another sample. Likewise, the population proportion is within the interval, and again, and again. So we're drawing these. Ah, now, this time, this interval does not contain the population, the true population proportion. Here's the true population proportion here, and here's the interval between this limit and that limit. Okay, so let's draw some more samples. Ah, and there's another one. And another one. And another one. So that's four so far. So that time we got four out of 50 that did not contain the true population proportion. And we got 46 out of 50 that did contain the true population proportion. Now, if we were to do this many, many times, what we would find is that in the long run, approximately 90% of confidence intervals will contain the true population proportion P, and approximately 10% will not. So therefore, the probability that a random confidence interval contains P is approximately 0.9. That's what we saw in the simulation. However, once again, as we saw in the simulation, once a particular sample proportion, p hat, has been observed and its confidence interval calculator cal calculated, it either contains p or it doesn't. So once it has been calculated, once it's there in front of you, uh, it's no long, there's, there's no longer any randomness. Uh, it's no longer a question of probability. Okay, so the confidence level, 90%, 95%, and so on, relates to the reliability of the estimation process. Okay, so it's the reliability of the procedure. It's not about a specific uh, calculated um, interval.